Hey guys, welcome back. It's your brother in Christ, Weston. Thanks for joining me today. So today's article comes out of the economic collapse. Let's get into it. Comes to 2022, you should definitely <clears throat> prepare for the worst. That was dated yesterday. Today's the 10th. Yeah, by an article by Michael Snyder, who I've read many articles from. Um, says here, if you have a bad feeling about 2022, you are not alone. As we approach the new year, it seems like things are going wrong all around us. We are facing the most epic supply chain crisis in history. Inflation is out of control. The girl dates, these things are killing careers and forcing people out of jobs all over the country. America is the most deeply divided that I've ever seen in my entire lifetime. Meanwhile, another wave of the of the blank emic appears to be building. Our hospitals are already packed with non, keyword, non C word patients of people who ha don't have it. Global hunger is on the rise and a major war could erupt in the Middle East at literally any moment. Unfortunately, I am entirely convinced that many of the problems that we are currently dealing with will escalate to an entirely new level in 2022, which I would absolutely agree. And I have been sounding the alarm on this channel almost every other video, if, if not uh, mentioning something um, uh, in my videos. Uh, for example, if you think that inflation is bad now, just wait until you see what is coming. We just got more evidence that wholesale inflation numbers are absolutely soaring. New wholesale inflation numbers from September are in and once again prove the rapid increase in prices for everyday items. It isn't transitory. As PJB, President PJB or Nadeb has repeatedly claimed, wholesale prices rose by 8.6% compared to September's 2020. Wow. Matching the largest increase on record. The days of relatively low inflation are gone for good. Wholesale inflation numbers continue to spike at a very alarming rate. It is inevitable that these costs will increase. Uh, well, these cost increases will be passed along to consumers. Uh, here is a tweet by Tommy Pigott. Uh, it says, Nadeb's inflation keeps soaring. For eight months in a row, annual wholesale prices increase have hit a new record high. In October, it matched the record high set, and it matched the record high set the month before, spiking 8.6% from a year ago. And here is a, um, a picture of that showing, uh, what is it? A uh, red meaning total, blue meaning total less foods. And then obviously you see the, the huge spike right there. Goodness gracious. Um, that's nuts. Uh, let's keep moving. Unfortunately, some corporations have already announced price hikes that will go in effect in 2022. For example, check out the increases that Kraft Heinz has planned for January 9th. In a letter to a regional distributor to the grocery store obtained by CNN Business, Kraft Heinz said it plans to raise prices on hundreds of items beginning January 9th, including varieties of gelatin pudding, which will jump anywhere between 7 to 16%, bagel bites, frozen snacks. Uh, we will see an increase of roughly 10%. Remember, I made a video about everything will increase at least 10%. Meanwhile, Cool Whip topping varieties will also see an increase of 7% to 10%. The cost of Easy Mac will rise 3.5%, while a 7.2-ounce dish of Kraft Big Bowl Mac and Cheese will see a 20% price hike. A 20% price hike for Mac and Cheese. Exactly. Question mark. That's, that's crazy. If you love Mac and Cheese, this would be a good time to start hoarding. <laughs> Meanwhile, the price of gasoline continues to rise very aggressively. Gas prices soared to a seven-year high, reaching a nationwide average of $3.42. Yep, that sounds about right. Uh, my local racetrack and QT, I think it's right down the street, um, uh, 340. I think I think we were sitting at like 339 the other day, according to data from the American Automobile Association. That's 16 cents higher than a month ago. That's crazy, or a dollar 31 more than a year ago, and 80 cents more than 2019, according to the AAA. I have been relentlessly warning that very painful inflation would come, and we well, what we would experience so far is just the beginning of a long national nightmare. I absolutely agree. Um, as I discussed earlier this week, our precedented supply chain crisis is one of the primary factors that is causing inflation to run so hot. In particular, the global shortage of computer chips has been significantly affecting the levels of production in countless other industries. And now we are being told that this shortage will last well into next year. Right, and I've read, our, I've read articles on that. The latest dose of reality was offered up by Infineon CEO, who said this week the chip shortage would last well into next year, according to Bloomberg. 
Infineon, a German semiconductor manufacturer founded in 1999, that is one of the 10 largest semiconductor manufacturers in the world, sales to the automotive industry make up about 40% of the company's revenue. That is crazy. CEO's Reinhard Ploss made the comments at an auto conference this week, stating that the company wouldn't be able to work off its order, off its order backlog until 2022. Of course, the CEO of Infineon was still trying to be optimistic when he made those comments. In reality, there appears to be no end in sight for chip shortage. The supply chain crisis is deeply affecting the distribution of food all over the planet, and that even includes food banks here in the United States. The ripple effect of the supply chain crisis continues. Now it's disrupting food banks, which is huge. When, when there's a shortage in supply chain, it makes it much more difficult for us to be able to provide our clients with food, uh, said Linda Hansen, the food bank director at Wellspring Interfaith Social Services. I am so thankful for all the wonderful food banks around the country that do such a great job for feeding so many needy people. Unfortunately, their job is going to become increasingly difficult as supply chain woes intensifies. And without a doubt, our supply chain woes will get a whole lot worse once the new OSHA, the OSHA date goes into effect. A ruling by the Fifth Circuit has temporarily suspended the, the girl date as litigation moves forward, and that is good news. But eventually, it'll probably inevitably, but wait, but eventually, it is probably inevitable that the U.S. Supreme Court will be forced to take up this matter, and the U.S. Supreme Court has made a bad decision after bad decision in recent years. Meanwhile, the Nadeb admin is telling businesses to ignore Fifth Circuit and to move forward with getting their workers with this. The White House on Monday said businesses should move forward with PJB's, uh, this guy, and testing requirements for private businesses, despite a federal appeals court ordering them to temporarily halt, halt the rules. Why? Because it was unconstitutional. Completely is unconstitutional. So how could you override your own constitution uh, as a president? Like, why? There's just... How do you do that? Like, how do you even agree with that? Um, people should not wait. White House Deputy Press Secretary uh, Karen Jean-Pierre uh, tells or told reporters during a briefing they should continue to move forward and make sure they're getting their workplace with this. If the U.S. Supreme Court ultimately rules that the Biden's uh, OSHA girl date is legal, I guess I said all that, it will be a death blow for our economy. I absolutely agree. And it will be a death blow for liberty and freedom in the United States at like... People don't understand that that is, that is something that you are, would be allowing to happen and you don't know how much freedom that is removing and the slippery slope that causes and the fact that you would promote this with the ideology behind it is, is, is nuts. It's crazy. We're, we're just not on the same page. Like there's just no way, like I'd break bread with you, but if, if you're telling me that, um, that I can't work and uh and that's your ideology of it i would try to truly understand how this would even make any sense and to and to force people and then to say if they can't do it they completely lose their jobs then we're in an energy crisis a labor crisis uh, a supply chain crisis a food crisis automobile crisis chip crisis we're in a uh, fertilizer where i mean the list goes on right and then you go okay well we need workers and then you don't have them don't you don't you just think for a second for a second that that sounds totally illogical and why would anybody consider that when you're trying to get out of it? Get out of this blank emic that we're going through, right? Supposedly, right? Um, how how could you continue to perpetuate that idea? I, I, I don't get it. I, I, it doesn't make sense. You have to make it make sense. Um, uh, so the stakes are incredibly high, exactly. And I don't have much faith in the U.S. Supreme Court at all. But even if we want to totally disregard the, the OSHA girl date for now, 2022 is still shaping up to be a really nightmarish year. Absolutely. Things are bad now, but they will soon get worse. I encourage you to prepare accordingly. Um, and then Michael's new book, talk or a book talking about the seven-year apocalypse or the seven-year tribulation. Um, yes, so... Uh, uh, I have told you about prepping and I am prepping. I am starting and uh, and I've already got some things and um, we'll start to order some things uh, even more as I see the day approaching, praying that it doesn't it never approaches, praying um, that uh, I'll have all this stuff and it will go to somebody who, who will actually need to use it versus me and my family. Um, I had a thought the other day and I've told some close friends of mine that maybe the reason why this order is the Lord has put it on my heart so heavily 
um, about this, the, what's going on and paying attention and preparing is because maybe um, it's meant for somebody who will come to know Christ to grab three bags, one for my wife, one for my son, one for myself with Bibles and food and all this gear and, and first aid kits and uh, and um, lanterns and all these all these prep things that I'm going to have set up um hopefully before everything you know before the shtf right um and uh and maybe that's how they're they will survive the great tribulation i don't know how people survive the great tribulation it's it, it's a supernatural act of god i know that there are nations that survive why because the judgment of the nations happens when Jesus comes back at his second coming. Second coming, Revelation 19, he comes down, sets up his millennial kingdom. There's a judgment, the sheep and goat judgment. Sheep on the right, goats on the left. And it's called the judgment of nations. And um, there are people who make it through. And I don't, I for the life of me, I don't know what that looks like. I don't even know how you do it. But they'll, I've told you plenty of times, I don't know how to plan for that. I don't know how to plan for, for utter destruction and the Lord pouring out wrath on the earth opening in G and mind you it's Jesus opening up the seven seals and then Jesus letting the trumpets go and then Jesus allowing the vials to go and then Jesus coming back it's not the enemy it's the Lord enacting wrath and using his agents to move around no matter if it's the enemy no matter if it's the destroyer no matter if it's demons it does not matter um what they are all subject to him and so he's the one that pours it out and so uh, we know that there's one fourth and then one third of things that get that get destroyed, land, sea, birds, ships, food, water, um, you name it, right? Um, uh, pretty much the pa paraphrasing here of, of the book of Revelation. Um, and so I don't know if all the world is affected by the Great Tribulation. I've thought about it and it's like, yeah, it looks like it, but I also see how, how, how do these nations make it through? I got to go back and read the book of Daniel and Zechariah to, to, to remember, because remember one third of the Jews will be saved. And I know that one, I know that the Jews will be taken Matthew 24 to a safe place. Right. Um, and as they are, they are kept there and they will be fed. Um, paraphrasing here. I don't want to butcher um, scripture. Uh, what is it? Um, so I will, I will be sure to make a video on that as well. But um uh, I don't know. I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a bunker. If you got a bunker and you're, you want your, you have room for three people. Great. Let me know. Um, but I don't have that. What I'm pre preparing for is inflation, hyperinflation. I'm preparing for it. Be hopefully keeping my job and not losing my job. Um, and for the, for, uh, one of my, one of my three theories, which two of them I feel are more firm than the last one, but I'm praying for this one. Uh, the, the first one is that, um, America's utterly destroyed by the antichrist. Or, or somebody completely wipes us out. So we're, we're not a factor. Number two, um, uh, America is a part of the beast system and they end up, you know, there's always going to be people who are living there who are not a part of that beast system. And that's how you get to Revelation 13 society and they cooperate and you have corruption and, and whatnot. And then you have these 10 kings, right? The seven headed dragon with 10 horns and the horns are kings and they have crowns. And then there's been power that's been given to them for an hour. Um, and uh and then what is it and they support the beast <clears throat> they will give up their their liberties to the beast right and then that's where we get you know where we're walking into revelation 13 society the whole world is agreeing to the beast to run this thing to have all this thing all this stuff to happen um and uh, and that's how society changes and that's how we get you know beheadings that's how we get uh uh this this mob of people who will who will worship the beast and take the mark and they'll be able to buy and sell because you won't be able to buy and sell or the third option is is that somehow America is redeemed. Somehow we I don't know. I don't I, I don't know. Mind you, this I'm just theorying here, talking with the Holy Spirit, looking at scripture. Um and I'd love to hear your theories in the comments. Um pointing down like the comments are 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 right here below me, but they're they're <laughs> below the video. Um uh, is that America somehow puts up a fight against um uh, the Antichrist and is able to hold back uh some of the armies. And that is because there are nations that survive. Uh, the Great Tribulation. I don't know how, like I said, I, I only believe it's a supernatural provision from the Lord. Remember the Lord says, I'll tell you the end, the end from the beginning. And so we draw, I was telling a friend, we draw lines, right? This is how the Bible is a, is a pattern of things that have happened. And as we get closer and closer to the middle, things start happening. You got this line connecting here and this one, and these are callbacks. And this is New Old Testament pointing to New Testament, New Testament pointing back to the Old Testament. It is a pattern for us to follow. And so that's why the Lord says, I will tell you the end 
from the beginning. So if you look at the beginning, you'll know how the end is going to happen, what's going to happen. Um, and that goes into just deeper understanding of, of scripture, Hebrew roots, stuff like that. So um, I am prepping as best as I can for, for food. And I am, I am uh, you know, told my wife that this is what we're doing and uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, and I'm preparing that if I can't be in my home, I can just up and leave. I don't know where I'm going yet. I, have, I don't know any of that. I'm just being completely open. Um, so if you know bug out locations, you know, places where there's going to be communities of people, it's hopefully believers um, and uh, and people are like minded, whatnot. And uh, and we, you know, start our own uh, community. I, I don't know. That's where my mind is at, because that's what it looks like. But I also have a theory that maybe it doesn't work out that way like that. And it's a slow crawl to where we're getting. And uh, and, and yeah. So anyways, um, uh, prepare. I agree with Michael. Prepare. You should be preparing. Uh, because this is very real and nobody thought that we would ever, I didn't think I was going to be a generation where I would hop into a, a World War Three or hyperinflation or this, like a, a hand number of, of, you know, at least multiple crises, probably, probably more than what I have in terms of fingers, probably fingers and toes of things that are happening that are uprooting. You can see it. The writing's on the road. Uprooting. I couldn't hear what you said. Well, thank you, Siri. My apologies as well. I didn't ask for your... Actually, I'm not apologizing to you because I didn't ask for you. Um, but uh, things being uprooted, right? System, infrastructures, money, uh, the dollar bill, our freedoms. Uh, and, and, and you're just going to like this this social socialist, communist China, for the lack of better words, um, uh, system. And it's like something is... And how, how? And you have to go back and just say... It's not just what's happening in America, it's happening all over the world. So, there's something way bigger that's happening and changing because something new is being brought in. That great reset that they talk about, right? We all know that's a new world order. We know that's antichrist, right? Uh, a political leader coming to save the day, right? Um, but I still believe we'll be raptured, absolutely 1000%. But I've told you, uh, I believe that we're still gonna go through tribulation, lowercase t, but not tribulation, capital T, and not great tribulation whatsoever. Um, I believe the bride of Christ will be raptured out um, and the Lord will protect his church. Absolutely. 1000%. I have full firm and belief in that. And maybe I'll do a video on that just to encourage you. I, I don't want to um, scare you, but I'm making these videos not for clicks, not for, for, for to scare you. It's to be open and honest and transparent about what I'm doing as a believer, what I'm listening to and what I'm hearing from the Lord, what I am seeing and praying that you will see the same thing and make decisions based off that. Be wise. Don't be fearful, but be wise. It's it's a scary time for sure. Um, but be wise in your estimate about what you're doing. Put back. When you go to the grocery store, buy two, maybe buy three of something. I don't know. Buy extra. Every time you go out, just buy a little extra and bring it back. Um, for the time being, I, I don't, because I don't know if we're going to hunker down at home or if I'm going to even be here. Um, uh, so I'm moving, I'm moving by faith in all areas. So anyways, guys, that's the video. I'll leave the, the article in the description below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know what you plan on doing. And, uh, and yeah, um, I would love a, a community of us to be able to work together if something happened, um, and meet up and, and, um, you know, for lack of better words, uh, learn how to survive, uh, until the Lord comes. I don't, I don't know, but if that, it, it's not off the table. It's not like it, it couldn't happen. So anyways, guys, that's the video. I'll see you in the next one.